Joanna Burke, and I'm one of the two certified Lego Education Academy teacher trainers at Modern Teaching Aids. And um, MTA have been distributors of Lego Education in Australia and New Zealand for the last 14 years. And the other teacher trainer is James Dwyer, who is on the chat function. And as I mentioned, he will be answering uh, your questions. So, um, <clears throat> to give you an idea of what we'll be covering in today's webinar, um, I guess, obviously, it's why use a Lego Mindstorms EV3 um, with your students. We're going to look at the EV3 kit, the sensors and the brick, the EV3 brick. Have a look at the software options available. So, um, obviously, I'll demonstrate the Scratch and the block-based programming environments. Um, have a look at the unit plans um, available for both of them and um, review the online support materials. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session and um, answer questions. So hopefully um, that will happen during the session and at the end. So I guess one of the questions we do ask, and just very briefly, is what skills do students need to acquire? And where does Lego fit in on this? So on the one hand, students need to learn the hard facts, as you can see there, especially in the STEM field. Um, I think we all know that, including arts and language arts. And on the other hand, the students need to acquire the soft skills, um, often referred to as the 21st century skills that you can um, see up there on the right-hand side. So Lego Education believes that both areas are equally important and interrelated. Uh, this is why, um, all Lego education solutions, including obviously the EV3, cater for and bridge both of these areas. And um, the, the Lego Mindstorms EV3s, um, and I'm sure some of you already know this and maybe using it, has been in the school community um, from its release in 2013. And um, definitely from what I've seen and what we know, it's been part of the, um, Lego Learning Continuum and, and is incredibly innovative and engaging and has just kept evolving and kept students moving along. So um, it's also used with the block-based, um, the graphical programming languages and the new scratch-based environment, text-based programming languages like Python, um, for which my colleague James um, runs, also conducts webinars too, if you're interested. Um, it then offers guided lessons and combined open-ended projects, which are dealing with real-world challenges, which is what we need to, to do to prepare students, I, mean, I guess, for the college and a career afterwards. So, in other words, it has a low entry point um, and a high ceiling right through to university and beyond. So, there's a... Um, a couple of little videos I'd like to show you because I think these give a good example of this. Because uh, clearly you can never say you're finished with EV3. Um, <clears throat> so this does show the low barrier to entry and, and how the high ceiling. Um, the first is, is a, a cute video, I guess, of a nine-year-old girl who's trying to solve a problem of feeding her fish. And the second one essentially speaks for itself. So um, I'll just play this for you and the way you go. So here we have this handy fish feeder. So this is my uh, pet sitter entry and basically it's on a timer currently for 15 seconds, but it could be for six hours, any amount of time. And when I press the button, it'll wait 15 seconds, which kind of seems like a long time, but And then hopefully it'll go. And 15 seconds later, it'll go again. And there, the fish have been fed. The end.
Okay, so um, I think you can clearly see there that um, it that definitely has a high ceiling and um, obviously just using the one motor there with the young girl, it's, it's, it's pretty good. So we're going to get started. So on the slide are the components of the Lego Mindstorms um, solution. One, which is the EV3 core set, and um, two is the uh, both versions of the EV3 app available. So we have EV3 Lab and EV3 Classroom. I'm guessing at this stage, um, you more than likely will be wondering what version you would download, either the EV3 Lab or the recently released EV3 Classroom. Um, if you are a Mac user with Catalina installed, you can only use the new Scratch-based programming, EV3 Classroom. Um, if you are a Windows user, you can use both. Um, I, that is, they can, I guess, both be um, installed on your device. Obviously, we can discuss this more, which is what we would probably thinking people have got questions for um, at the end of today in the, in the Q&A. There's also a variety of other programming languages, platforms, environments that are compatible with EV3. There's the MicroPython that we just discussed before, Swift Playgrounds, Code Z, Microsoft MakeCode, Robot C, et cetera, and many more that aren't officially supported. Um, also because it's also been out for quite a while now. So um, I'm going to hopefully give you an overview of all of those, but first we'll um, look at the uh, hardware. So when you um, look at the, just the EV3 core set itself, um, if you can see up there on the slide, there's a sorting tray, which is the red tray. And there's a sheet that actually comes with the EV3 set, which you can use to label each of um, your compartments. Um, obviously then they hold all the connectors and a certain type of elements, which I'll just look at closely in a sec. So this helps the sets um, for set management. The students can find the elements they need. Um, there's also a top and a bottom card. So it shows how the elements should be sorted. Uh, for me, when, when I um, talk to teachers, I recommend that um, you sort one of the sets yourself. And if you can, let the student sort the rest because um, this helps with them getting used to the elements and how they're organized. So that's it's sort of more the elements and I'm going to look at the, um, I'll just take you and just show you those a little bit closer. So just looking at the Lego Technic building system used by the EV3 platform, um, the elements themselves are sorted into different categories. So you've got the structural elements, I guess, essentially hold the model together. Um, you've got the connector elements, which link the elements to each other. You have the movement elements, which are used to enable the movement. And then of course you have the decorative elements, which everyone seems to like and um, can add decoration to the model. Uh, so from sort of, I guess, the hardware, we move on to the electronic components. Now you'll see the main um, EV3 brick there in the center. So I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. So looking at the um, touch sensor first, so we've got the touch sensor, so that can um, detect whether it's pressed or released or whether it's been bumped. Um, I find that it's really useful when you are talking about sensors with the students that you actually talk to them about the real life applications. It's all very well seeing it connected to a brick there, but we do need the real life application. So, you know, obviously they can, use a button as a finger to detect an obstacle for the, for the touch sensor. But it also can be found in household appliances, etc. cetera. Um, then we've got the gyro sensor. So the gyro sensor itself um, measures angular velocity, so how fast it turns. Um, and it can also determine rotation angle, how far it's turned in a single axis. So I guess like sitting on a carousel, um, it can tell you how many degrees per second it's spinning. Um, it's found in smartphones, etc. So um, then we have the color, which is the color, which is a two, two for one. It's like a color light sensor. So, um, so it's got the three modes. So the color can distinguish seven different colors. Um, and I mean, you can find that definitely in electronic games and cameras and 
Then you have the ambient light, which measures the uh, density, I guess, of light in hitting the sensor. Um, can be used for burglar alarm, possibly. And then you've got the reflected light. So I've found for me when I've gone into schools and working with students that this sensor seems to be the most used in, in all the robotics I've seen, the light sensor, I guess, for line following and students have it, um, use it for this. So what it does is it turns on a small lamp and measures the intensity of light reflected back from a surface. So from zero to 100% being the brightest. Um, and it can be found in barcode scanners. So um, the next one we've got here is the ultrasonic. So the ultrasonic measures the distance to an object in front of it. So similar to a bat, it emits ultrasound waves and measures how long it takes the sound to reflect back to the sensor. Um, really good for mazes, avoids obstacles. It can locate objects, um, detect visitors. Um, so, you know, obviously used for opening doors to a building, hand wash dispensers, etc. And then we have, um, last but not least, of course, um, the motors. So we've got two large motors and we have one medium motor. And they have a built-in rotation sensors that's allowing them to be controlled precisely. So for instance, they rotate with a certain amount of power in a certain direction for a certain number of degrees. So the large motors are bigger and stronger and the medium motor is small and fast. Um, they can be used obviously for many things and we know they can be used to make vehicles move, etc., and um, found in household appliances, cars, factories, you can keep going. Um, additionally, um, there are third party sensors that can be available for the block-based programming. So then we go on and have a look at the brick. Um, so it's, um, that's just really, it was best because of the way this webinar is and the format to show you the actual slide. I actually have a brick here, which um, you could probably not see that well, but for instance, um, when you actually turn it on, you'll see that there's a display line and it's green. It's red as it's starting up. And then once it goes on, the display shows you what's going inside the EV3 brick. We have four tabs that are running across the top there. And this first tab um, actually are all the programs that have actually been executed and run, we'll show here. The second one um, is where all the programs that the students download are saved. The third one are where all the apps are saved. So for instance, when you go into port view to look at a reading from a sensor, and then you have the settings, the basic settings, but where you can turn on and off Bluetooth and when you want it to go to sleep, etc. And then you've got your button. So you've got obviously the center button, which turns it on. And then you have um, the buttons surrounding that, which are up, down, left and right. Um, and then the one that I found the most important when I first learned about the EV3 was this top left button, because it, you can quickly abort a program if it's running and it's doing the wrong thing. And obviously if you get lost in the menu anywhere, if you press the top left button, you'll, you'll, you'll stop everything. So that's, but if, um, I know it's a bit hard to see, but we've got a rechargeable battery at the back which is charged by a, a charger, which I'll show you shortly. And you also have a USB connection, um, the other end, but of course you can have Bluetooth connection. You also have a USB here, which allows you for a Wi-Fi dongle. And you've got the, um, the SD card, which increases the uh, memory for you. And what have I missed? You've got your connecting elements here and um, we've got the speaker on the side. So I think pretty much um, that's the brick for you. So when I spoke about the um, charging options, so these are what's available. Um, obviously the charger or transformer is not included in the set. Um, because it's around the world and everyone has different connections and voltage, etc. So Lego has um, a single charger, which is available. And then we um, have a multi-charger, which is a, 
made in Australia, actually. So you can charge now. We have two multi-chargers, one for charging eight and one for charging 10 at um, one time, which sometimes makes it quite easy. You don't need to take the rechargeable battery out of the EV3 brick to charge it, um, but you can and you can charge them separately. So it doesn't um, make any difference there. Now, the other um, pick I've got on there, which I really haven't mentioned um, yet, is there's, as well as the core set, there is an expansion set. So the expansion set is not necessary um, to cover all the unit plans, either in the lab or the classroom, but you will need it if you're going on into competitions um, for those. And it also offers those extra building possibilities. There is um, the the one section when I show you later, you'll see where the expansion set can be used. So it's really like a whole set of extra parts as well as a lot of people use it for um, building as well. But what I'm going to do now is um, open up the software or I might just go into the software and um, I'll just open it up so that we can get that up and pull it up so that you can see it. And I'll just wait for it to come up here. Okay, so um, what I have up here now is I've opened up the EV3 Oh, hold on a second. Should be coming up. Sorry about that, but it seems to want to disappear, but hopefully it won't anymore and we can keep going. Okay, so um, what I've got up here is the EV3, which is the lab version, the block-based programming environment. And when you first go into it, you have the um, lobby and you have a little section there that start here, which is which can take you through prepare, try, use and next steps. So that's just a really quick way of getting started and um, it can be a good intro for you. And then you have a new project, which um, is where you go in to start obviously your programs and the programming environment. Um, then there are tutorials. Um, so the block-based programming environment, it comes with 40 default blocks and all those blocks are actually covered in the um, tutorials when it's covering um, the software options. So in the tutorials, which is called a robot educator, there's the hardware that you can actually look through and if I click on here, the structure is actually, they all laid out the same way. So this will take your students to work through essentially the hardware, looking at the sound, the light, the display, the brick buttons, the large motor, and then all the sensors, and then a program that's sort of associated with each of them. So I'll just show you a couple of these and then we'll go into the, just so that you can see because they are all the same. So when they're learning about the color sensor or looking at here, there is a video for them to watch. So if I click on this, um, Blue. it should just yes. come up. Thank you. And I hope that you could hear that sound on there. Then they um, click on open and you go into um, the activity that they've got. So you've got the programming window now and then you have the color sensor. Obviously it's color, use the color sensor to find different ways of detecting colors. And there are five steps, they can watch the video again. But while we're in here, I'm just going to show you because I am gonna come back and create another program. But it has this um, color sensor program tutorial we're looking at is actually opened up up here, but it's also opened up our programming window and we've got the start um, block that we need here. And then you can see all the, um, the blocks are down the bottom of the programming window and they are all in their colored 
palettes. So they all included in each one. So the green are all the action blocks. And as you scroll over, you can actually see what each block is. So there's a lot of help there for you. Um, I will come back to this shortly. So if you don't see it, that if it's um, we'll be coming back. Then they've got the um, the flow control where we have the wait for blocks, the the loop, it switch, etc. Then the sensors, data operations, advanced, and my blocks. So um, I'm just going to come back to here, and then I'll just go back up to here. And there's also building instructions. What's really good though, in all the tutorials, they have this interactive animation included, which means the students can actually click on either this um, program, which is the um, program for this, or they can click on here and watch it. So what it does is it will work through the program and highlight each block so they can see where it's up to. So if I click on here, you can see Ooh. it corresponds with the video. Yes. Thank you. And hopefully they've got it all right and they can go on, they can test it, then they can modify it and then they've done it and they can go back to where they were. So I'm just gonna pop back to the lobby. So as I said, they all like that, but I will come back to, we've got the driving base beyond the basics. There's data logging and there's the tools. So, um, all in all, there's quite a lot there for you to get through with them. And then there are the building instructions, which um, are really good because these are great for building ideas, especially for those students that you want to challenge and get going further and give them more ideas. And those that are struggling a little bit to build with um, the EV3 uh, elements. So there are all these building ideas here for them that are listed down here. So if they just really want to work out how to connect something, they can come in here and have a look. Um, the next one actually shows you the core set models. And underneath that, you can see it says expansion set models. So the core set models themselves are what Lego call inspirational models. And they are included, not so much, that's exactly what they are for you to, now you can use them. Sometimes I've seen teachers use them at the end of the term and then the students get to build them and modify them and, and I guess compete with Lego and make them, make them much better. But there's the gyro boy, there's a color sorter, there's a puppy and a robot arm. So the color sorter and the gyro boy, each of them again, when they open them up, they actually then have a video for them to see that I guess I mean, I'll just show this video very quickly because the gyro boy also up, um, appears obviously in the classroom as well. So um, they can make it in, in both. Um, and he's just gonna go. Oh no, I'll just move on from there. So then there's building instructions here. But also what they have is a sample program, which can look quite intimidating to someone who's just starting out. And, but it can be downloaded and they can actually see hopefully how it works or you can get them to design their own program and see if they can do it. So um, they can obviously be all made from the core set, but when you go on into the expansion set, you um, need a core set and sometimes you need actually to expansion, but you've got a tank bot, you've got Zap, you've got a stair climber, which is one of my favorite because um, I think we had some year 11 students we gave a challenge to, so it can climb the stairs, but now we want you to get it back down again. So, I mean, it tells you what you need here. You'll need one core set, one expansion. There's an elephant, there's a spinner factory, and this one needs two core sets and one expansion set and it all starts to get more complex. So I think that they are really good to, for extending those students that you just want to offer that bit more to. And then there are the little extras down here. Um, so there's the design and engineering. Um, this has some really great videos that take you through to the, I guess, the real life scenario. 
So we've got robots in action. So just to briefly, because you know, I clearly don't want to run out of time today. Um, we've got logistics, um, which is a quick video on that. We have medical, personal, production, safety and security, there's space, and there's transportation. And I'm sure that when I'm flicking through that, for those of you, you would see that, that where it would fit into your curriculum. But what I really like too is the make it move. So they've got to look at making it move with wheels, um, display speed with it, then without wheels, up an incline and in a pattern. Now there are um, obviously similar activities which I'll show you shortly in the classroom. These make it smarter, these make a system. Then there's more building ideas, some key concepts and a teacher's guide for you. Um, now there is the space challenge. Now for this, you actually do need the space challenge set as well, the Lego. So um, that is extra above the core and the expansion, but it's, it's a, a really good challenge. And I have seen it set up in many libraries over the last few years with um, where students just go in and use it. And obviously it fits really well with um, into a, a lot of the curriculum outcomes for some classes. And then you've got science, which brings in your data logging. So there's quite a lot there for you to um, work through. So what I'll do now is I'll just take you into um, a new program and we'll just look at a program. I'm just gonna change the video over. I've made a pretty daggy looking, um, um, I guess, uh, where am I clicking on new program fan, which I'm sure I probably wouldn't show to too many people. So, um, but so I'm going to go in and switch the um, camera over to that just to make sure everything can work too. So when you have a look at this programming screen, um, I now have what I call a new program and um, I'm going to go file. And then I'm going to save project as, and I've done a few of these. So I'm just going to click save and I'm going to say yes. So you see, I've actually now got my own project, which is workshop. And then I'm going to add programs that would be connected to it. And I can just change the name of my program and maybe call it fan for want of a better one. So call it fan. Now, while I'm just sort of up here, I am going to show you that there are the tools across here and there's a really good help. There's the show you the user guide you can go into here, show the EV3 help. Everything you want to know about the EV3 is, is actually there for you. And in the tools, you especially need your firmware updates. So you know where to go and get that. Sound editor, image editor, et cetera. Everything that you need to know is up on the file or to access, I mean. Um, so then on the bottom right hand side of my screen, you'd be able to see I've opened the box for you. And you'll see that I have an EV3 brick already connected and it's showing. So um, what I might do is just switch over hopefully to that and um, hope that my dog stays out of the picture and that you can see that okay because she, um, gets a bit concerned when she's not involved with what I'm doing. Um, so you can see now I've got my fan sitting there, which hopefully I'm going to get um, moving for you shortly. And my bricks connected and turned on and it's to USB. Um, I could have connected to Bluetooth, but um, I, I haven't at this stage. And then if I click on to port view, um, you can, we can also see what is connected, which is really good for troubleshooting and whether anything's um, got an issue or not. So I've got one motor connected to output D and then I have three sensors, one on, uh, I have a touch sensor on one, I have a color light on three and an ultrasonic on four. I can also click on here, obviously, and I've just done that and down onto brick information which gives me the firmware version. I'm just gonna leave it on port view. And then to the right of that, I've got um, the EV3. You can see it's saying it's connected. 
and I have the three download arrows. So one is the green and that will download and execute it immediately. And then I have, this one will download it into my EV3 brick, but then I have to access the brick by pressing on the button here and selecting it and finding the program and running it. This one downloads and runs it immediately. And then this one actually allows you to highlight part of a program and then download it, which um, is really good for troubleshooting, of course. So what I would like to do now is, as you can see, these are, as I said to you, the color palettes with where the blocks are. And because I only have a large motor, I'm gonna bring that up here. But I'm just going to show you these two. There's move steering and there's move tank. So the move steering um, block allows us to synchronize our motors. And so they move obviously together. And then the move tank allows us to program our robot, our, our block, our robot independently. Um, so I'm just going to, so now I have my um, block for D and um, I just now need to decide what I want my, um, my motor to do. So if I click on here, I need to obviously change the parameters. I can turn it off. I can turn it on. I can have it on for seconds. I can have it on for degrees or rotations. So I'm just gonna leave it at rotations. So that's um, one rotation of the um, axle or wheel. And then the next is got a 50 there, but what this is, is the speed and the direction. So, I mean, obviously if I had a couple, I'd be either going forward, or I'm going to, um, at the moment I can change my speed and I would be going in a forward direction. Otherwise I can flip it and go in reverse or anti-clockwise and clockwise, but I'm just gonna change it back to 50 so that hopefully you can see something move. And I'm gonna make it for one rotation and then stop. So hopefully if I've got all that connected correctly, it will download and turn, as you can see, not very clearly, I'm sure, but you could see that it turns and away it goes. So um, what I could just show you maybe is one of the sensors um, very quickly. So if we've got a fan, then maybe um, this is a wait for, but um, what I could do is I actually um, want to wait till I come in the room before the fan turns on. So I can go up to the weight, go down and select from the menu ultrasonic sensor, go out, compare distance in centimeters. So possibly when it's less than 10, um, I want my motor just to turn on. And then if I bring up another, weight then I can choose my ultrasonic and then um, when the distance then is greater um, possibly at 50 then I'll get my motor to turn off so this is just to give you a quick idea of adding the, um, the sensors and then it'll turn off so looking at it here um, when it detects um, a person or an object less than 10 centimeters away, the fan should switch on. And when it um, detects the object is now greater than 50, the fan should turn off. So if I download this into my robot, um, it's now the green lights flashing on the brick and it's waiting as you can see on the block up there to go further in the program. So hopefully, I'm gonna bring my hand in front and then once I go away, it's gonna stop and I've now exited. So it's just a matter now if I wanted to, which I'm not going to obviously because of time, um, you could change it to the color, you could start your program with a touch sensor, etc., And it's quite easy to do that and change the parameters of it. And um, you can go through and you can bring up a loop block I could highlight all these blocks. I'm sorry, I'm just, what am I doing? Bring up my loop block, put it in front of here. I can highlight all the blocks and I can just bring them into the loop 
and um, change them around like that so it moves quite quickly. But what I'll do now is we'll go back into the um, lobby and I just want to show you a one more tutorial here which is in the Beyond the Basics. So um, you can actually see those um, being used and we can go around to, so we've got multitasking, it takes us into the loop, but it takes you into the switch. Now, because I mentioned before that line following is really popular and very well used, then this is not quite a line following, but almost, it's a zigzag, um, but it's, it's using the switch block and, um, they can watch a video of it. And you can see there that when it was going, it was actually reading the um, light levels between, so the white is the brightest and the black is obviously the darkest. I can open up here. Once we go in here, it actually now has the same again and they can go through a suggestions for building a game, but this time they have the interactive animation too, which is really good because it actually gives more clarification for them. If they're having trouble, that is, this is these are really only for students who need this extra assistance. They can test it and then they can modify it. And I really, they just, this just gets them going with line following because I've just seen them go on and do, you know, heaps of really good stuff. So so that's essentially the lobby there. And um, what I am going to do now is take you back. I'm going to shut this down and um, I'll close that off. And I don't want to save anything. Then I am going to um, open up the EV3 um, classroom with a bit of luck. Hopefully that will open and um, you will see that shortly. Okay, so um, I've opened up the EV3 classroom and the good thing about um, this is, and I'm just going to just change back for a second. Okay, so the good thing about this is that um, you don't have to um, update the firmware, you don't have to change it or anything. I've just left um, my brick connected. What I might do though is just disconnect it and reconnect it for you so that you can see that. I've disconnected, brick was disconnected and now um, hopefully I'm just going to connect it again. So. Um, I could use Bluetooth as well, but I think I'm playing on the safe side and, and using a USB cable. Okay, so you'll see that the lobby is slightly different in classroom. And um, there's a start here, which means you get familiar with EV3 and fun activities, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, there's the recent projects, there's unit plans and the core set models. And um, up the top here, is the same menu. So we've got the home, we have the start, um, we've got the units, the build and my project. So um, I'm going to just come back to here and we'll have a look at this. So in the start here, um, what it takes you through, if I click on here, there's a hello world. So they download and they have um, a display on the EV3 and away they go. Um, there's, then there's the modus and the sensors. So they look at controlling inputs and outputs, pretty much like the model I've made up, um, where you just connect the sensor and the touch and the motor together. And then they build a driving base and away they go. So there's also some teacher preparation there for you if you want to use it. Um, and then we go into the units. So the units, as you can see, are quite different, but I will show you online as well. And the robot trainer, um, again, um, all the um, stacking blocks, which I'll show you, um, are all covered um, in these and the structure is all the same with them. So for instance, I will show you in the robot trainer, um, the colors and lines, which was pretty similar to what we just looked at. If you click on 
here it says more and it tells you what you need and then we can go into the lesson plan but we can just click on start here and now we are in here so I can actually explain to you the code blocks so these are all the stacking blocks and as you can see color coded again so we've got the motors we have movement got the display we have sound we have the events and the control and the sensors, the operations, the variables, and then obviously my blocks of which there is nothing there. So I'll go back to the motors again. You can also see um, up on there that you can see my sensors connected. And um, I'm just going to see, and now if I click on where it's connected, um, you get to look at the brick. Um, this is where you actually have the port view, I guess. Um, it gives you the firmware version, the name of the EV3, which you can rename in here. Tells me there's a motor connected. It's got um, my ultrasonic and four, um, my color light on three and my touch on um, one. And they all connected and ready to go. But we are actually in one of these um, tutorials. So, I can actually select to have fewer code blocks because these are really only the blocks they need for this activity and they come up first. But if you want to show them all, then you can. Um, so there are six steps to this lesson plan. They call these content cards and it's using colored lines for navigation and in a factory floor. And I mean, obviously it sets through a lot of these um, examples so they tell them to try the first two programming stacks um, set up the robot near the line and they offer them some challenges how to calibrate the color sensor and then it's time for a challenge so and then um, obviously it's how well did you do and is anything else you could have done better so they continually getting the students to self-assess and assess with their peers as well which makes it a lot easier and um, I'll just take you back to the lobby though to get out of there. But those, um, again, there's a space challenge, which is the space challenge set. Um, so you need that. And um, all these activities are the same as what you've got in what you would have seen in the EV3 lab. And then you've got the engineering lab, which are slightly different activities from before, but um, there's things such as free falling, which is really great. So they're looking at the acceleration of gravity. And um, I think this just makes a big difference to what's a free fall. I mean, I just think that looks really exciting for students, to be honest, especially about people who jump out of an airplane and slowed by aerodynamic resistance as they fall. So there's a lot of things that, as you would know, that um, they can talk about and there's a fun little thing there is it true that a hippopotamus falls at exactly the same rate as an earthworm in a vacuum i mean and so they can go on and, and do it and there are six steps with that so there's i think a lot of really good stuff to explore and then besides the unit plans um which i was going to show you've got the core set models which were there before so you've got those involved now um while I'm up here again, you've got the projects that you have, you can go in and delete them, etc. And then in the settings, you have really good help. So here it will go through if you're not quite familiar with, um, look, I wasn't familiar with Scratch at all when we were first introduced to um, it a while ago, and I'm slowly getting used to it. But um, I do believe that it's been in the classroom and teachers are quite familiar with it. So a lot of you are probably quite um, au fait with all the blocks but if you need to know anything about them or what they do then they they're all here for you there's also a hardware overview so it's a pretty good help I think and um, there's obviously some good books on the market well there's you don't really need them but um, Damien Key's actually written a really good book he's written one for every um, that's been released and he's got classroom activities for this as well so you can have a look at the um, classroom activities there um, but what I'm going to do is just take you into um, a new project possibly and just perhaps replicate one of those that we had here 
So when we're looking at this, we need a hat to start our program. And um, it doesn't change the, um, I actually have to change this because my motor is actually on D, as you can see up there. So I'm just going to get it to run and then I'm just going to get my motor to stop. So um, I have to remember not to forget to do that. So let's just see if I can download that with. Okay, so um, just to uh, show you, I might just go back so that I change my camera over because I tend to forget to do things and I need to stop it. So um, it's just a matter of this is your download and run over here. This one will download and, and it execute it and away it goes. So it's um, quite easy and, and in that respect to use and then if I wanted to I could probably replicate um, what um, I was doing but I really would like to show you so there is the movement block but we also have the display so we can display eyes in neutral for, um, here obviously for two seconds we can um, play a sound um, if I click on here I can actually change it to, um, I don't know, um, maybe we'll just say, um, I don't know what that sounds like. Okay, so um, we'll just, I better stop my program first. I have to keep remembering to do that. And if I download that and it displays and it says okie dokie. So there you go. So that's just adding this. And then if I wanted to, um, I could actually sort of very quickly bring up a program down here possibly. So when the distance is less than maybe um, 10 centimetres, um, I go up to my motors, I'm going to start my motor and where's my motor at um, yeah at maybe 50 and change it to D obviously and I don't need that so when it detects um, so I've used the ultrasonic um, so when the distance is less than 10 centimeters I'm going to start my motor but then um, I need to go down to the control and I want to wait so I can bring up a wait until. And then if I go to the sensors, I can actually go to find my ultrasonic, which I really like. They've all got their little um, icons next to them and find the one that I need for this um, control and hopefully it will go in there. So then I change this to when the distance is greater than 50 centimeters. Um, I shall go back here and I shall get my motor to stop. So, um, and then maybe just to double check on that, we might play a sound. So. When the distance is less than um, um, 10 centimetres, we're going to, um, when it detects an object, I should say less than 10 centimetres away, we're going to start the motor at 50. Um, when the distance is greater than 50, we're going to stop the motor and play a sound. So I'm going to download this in here, put my hand in front of here and then move slowly away from it and it stops. So Hopefully you saw that all the blocks were highlighted as well when the um, program was actually running and now I'm going to stop it. So that's, I guess, the, um, a quick overview of the uh, stacking blocks um, and the scratch-based programming. But what I would like to do now is to um, just share this, um, go back to the PowerPoint and um, I'm just going to bring this up and
hopefully this will come back to you soon. And you should be able to see this up on here. I'm just going to show you this quickly before we go into the online lessons, just to explain what this is. So to scaffold um, learning, the Lego Education chose to follow the 5E instructional model. And um, it consists of, I guess, these phases. So really briefly, we've got um, the engage. So it helps the students become engaged in the very beginning um, in a new concept with short activities that um, you probably saw. And I'll just switch back on my camera because I forget to do that all the time. And um, then obviously we've got explore that helps them use their prior knowledge, um, I guess, to generate new ideas and ask questions and, and investigate and design. Then we have the um, explain, which focuses, I guess, and on, um, I guess, on one aspect of their engagement or one thing that might they possibly doing. This then, I guess, elaborates it further. And then at the very end, we've got the evaluation, which involves the te um, you as a teacher, the peers and um, themselves as well. So what I will do is I'm just going to switch over then to um, hopefully show you the lessons online. And it might just take a couple of minutes for it to come up for you, but it should come up now. Okay, so these are, and the website addresses that I've been using um, are on the last slide today. So you should be able to get all those and they'll be there um, later. So when you go in um, to the lesson plans, um, the Lego education lesson plans for the EV3, there are three that are sitting here. One's a robot trainer. These in here all relate to the classroom. The autonomous vehicles all are connected to the um, EV3 lab. And then the computer integrated manufacturing gives samples in Python. But because they are all structured the same, I'm just going to um, maybe bring up one for you and so you can just see it. So this is the um, factory robot. Um, it's design and build extensions onto the driving base, program it to complete two tasks. So if I click on this, this now then explains the five E's. So um, it gives you the time it's probably going to take, the level it is, the, the approximate grade. So here is the lesson plan. And I think this really helps in for your classroom lesson plan as well. So you have, um, the preparation, obviously, which is key. But before I do that, I nearly forgot. That should show the teacher support, which are the key objectives, the things you'll need are all here, additional resources, etc. Um, so first is part A. So you could just have part A in one lesson. So you've got engage, explore, um, which is 10 minutes and about 35. Part B is about 10, 35, and then you evaluate. But then after that lesson plan, it gives you your ideas. So you have Ignite, a discussion and how to do it, suggestions for you, um, some building tips maybe you can give your students, coding tips, um, the differentiation. So you can simplify it, shows you how to simplify it or to take it further. So every student feels confident with what they're doing, which I think is pretty important. The assessment um, opportunities, so there they are, the self-assessment and teacher, but it also has a cross-curricular here for you. So the language arts extension, which is great, and Lego have even added career links, which I think is quite interesting. So at the top here, you'll see that this menu um, appears as well. So we can quite easily get back up here and um, it really does show the uh, lesson, um, I guess, that, all the structure is the same and you can go online at any time and look at any of these lessons. Um, you don't have to have an EV3 set to do that or you don't, you know, don't, you can just have a look at the lessons online. You don't even have to have the software um, loaded, which I think is great. So I hope that that's given you um, a good idea of this. So I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint and we're just about ready to finish up as I'm mindful of the time and I know it's probably crept away but I'd love to just show you this share this video with you that I have just um, to show you a year five um, having a quick go at um, 
the with EV3. It was one of the first times they'd all used it, and they were using the iPad. So they were using the um, the block based programming. So I'm just going to um, bring up the PowerPoint again. And it's just taking its time doing everything today. So this is the um, quick video. Hopefully the um, sound is just all going on that. And I'll just... Well, hopefully that um, gave you some idea of how it all um, comes together for some young students anyway. They were having a pretty engaging time. Um, so we're now up to the Q&A and um, I think James has been kept busy. So uh, I think um, we can, I might just get you to unmute yourselves. I'll just allow that to happen and um, get James to come on and we can go through anything that we've not answered yet. But just before we do, um, there's a promo code, um, it's a 15% discount just for all you special people that have managed to stay on for the webinar. Um, it's valid for two weeks. It's not going to be seen anywhere else. It's a code just for you and it won't be emailed out at all. So I would suggest if you want to buy anything from MTA in the next two weeks that you take a snapshot of that on your phone or something and um, you can have it to you. So um, there's also um, some websites there that you may find useful um, where you can access the lesson plans. Obviously, you can use Google as well, the Lego engineering site, um, where we have all our professional, hopefully back to face-to-face -to -face workshops again soon. Um, our webinars are all on our YouTube. Um, there's a really good community you can join with Lego education users from around the world. Obviously, your colleagues, social media networks. You can email me or email James. And I thank you all for attending today's webinar. And for those of you who want to stay around for the Q&A, um, please feel free. So, um, James, can you unmute yourself now? And yeah. I will... I'm here, Joanna. Okay, yeah. cool. I can't see you. Okay. Uh, yep, my video is projecting. I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll just ensure everyone else can unmute themselves as well. Oh, okay. Thanks for that. Oh, participants to unmute themselves. So, yeah, anyone who wants to ask a question can jump in. Um, yeah. yeah, I was very busy on the chat. <laughs> one of the busiest Good. times. I'm and, glad. Um, yeah, uh, we had uh, a, a few people who were asking some really relevant questions. There was Mrs. Moss, and she, at her school, she's running, um, or what I can tell or know of it, she's running the Mac OS, so Catalina. Yeah. And essentially, if you've got the Mac Catalina, then on, on Catalina, it's a 64-bit only operating system, which means you're sort of more or less locked into the EV3 Classroom app. So unless you went into something more complex like a dual boot system, um, where you could load two operating systems on, um, you won't be able to use EV3 Lab. However, for everybody else that's out there, um, if you're on Windows, 
Um, Windows uh, um, accepts both 32-bit and 64-bit um, programs, and therefore you can continue to use uh, EV3 Lab. And um, there's some advantages to that as well. Sorry, Joanna, were you about to say something? No, I was just going to say for those who've, who've got um, the version of the EV3 Lab that I, I had up on my screen, I would suggest they keep that version. Yeah, the, the last two versions of EV3 Lab are really um, stable. They're well developed, they've been used for years. So if you've got um, EV3 version 1.4.2, then yeah. stick with it. Don't update to the necessarily to the latest. The reason being, um, I had someone uh, um, jump on and ask um, why my, um, or oh, sorry, why? why they couldn't see the add-on packs that you demonstrated, the, the engineering oh, right. okay, and the yeah. thing. So what I could do quickly is just, I might yeah. try to share do you my want, screen. Do you want to do it or do you want yeah. me to go? No, you do it, James. Is okay. yeah. yeah, only because mine appears a little bit different. Yeah, so, yeah no worries. Go for it. So if you can, Joanna, can you confirm you can see my screen at the moment? Uh, yes, oh. I can. Good. Okay, so here, what Joanna was showing you, she had downloaded these particular units. You can see in mine that I haven't. So um, I've only downloaded Space Challenges or the Space Challenge there. I could go in and download those. Now, I, said, I think with version 1.4.5, they've actually removed the ability to download those. And I'm not sure... Um, what's going on? There seems to be you know, a few limiting factors if you go to version 1.4.5. Um, Joanna and I are in the process of trying to see if we can um, have version 1.4.2 um, <laughs> loaded onto the, um, the MTA website. There might be issues with that and it may never happen. But We're going to um, try very hard. Yes, to see. So to make that available, I think that's probably the best version of the lab software. Yeah. Absolutely. Hopefully that's, yeah. Um, some were talking about the recording. So, yeah, it will definitely, a link will be sent out to everyone that attended the webinar. So, you'll have a link to view it. Um, you'll be able to access it. So. Mm -hmm. And the other question that I got asked or okay, was where do they find the um, EV3 Lab software? And so, if I go. That's in retired products. So, are you okay to go in there? Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. going there now. I so think I had it up. if you were to type in um, just, so if you typed in, sorry, uh, EV3, oh, wait, wait a minute, sorry. I'm... EV3 Lego downloads. Yeah, because I've got it. Are you right? Because I've got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just, okay. so you, you want to make sure you go to this education version of Lego and you click on that. And when the page loads up, okay, this is, this one, this version 1.2.2, this is where you get the classroom app, okay? Now, if you're not looking for the classroom app, you can go back to this section here. Oh, wait a minute, that started straight in the EV3, hasn't it? Okay, EV3 downloads. I wanted to show that doesn't, well, okay. Sorry, I'll just... Um, Sorry, I'll just show a slightly different. This is sort of the download section. And if you come in here, that's the screen where I went to, where the EV3 Classroom app is. If we go back, down the bottom here is this retired product section. And this is where you'll find the EV3 Lab software. And for, some of you may choose to go with it. The added benefits of it, what are they? You can use third-party sensors. Um, you can do data logging. Joanna? Um, yeah, and oh, and there's obviously the, in the unit plans as well that are, are through, through it. Is the, there are just a few more things that are still with those that they've retained. Um, they've just dropped a couple of things in it. So I feel that um, if you can, I, I would use, you know, the lab yeah. in that way. I, I think you can also download it, have a look at it, and decide for yourself because there's no it's no issue to do that. So as you can um, see, yeah, Joanna demonstrated running both of them. Yeah. You didn't so, need to change the firmware. No, it's just, just connected straight away and it's really easy to interchange. I've got both on my um, laptop, so I, I don't have a problem at all. So 
I mean, just give it a go. And besides that, if you have any questions or any issues or you need assistance, both James and myself um, are available to help you. So, um, and so you can always feel free, even if you think it's a silly question, we're more than happy to, because no question is silly. So we're more than happy to um, help you out. Um, we've probably been through it ourselves in trying to, to get things done. If you're, uh, one other thing, if you're using iPads, um, iPads run a very limited version of the lab software. It will probably benefit you greatly to go to the classroom. If you're on iPads, to go to EB3 Classroom. In that case, it is a more powerful environment for the iPad. And uh, that yeah. I think is the same for Chromebooks and those sort of things. It well. is, yeah, just definitely yeah. the same for Chromebooks. So, um, and it all, it all sort of comes together, I think, in the end. But... Um, 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 hopefully that's um, how we're going. Is we got? Is we sort of I'm just answered scared. everything? I'm just sc scanning <laughs> through old questions. We've got a couple of new messages. Okay, they're thank yous. Yeah, so I All think right. that covers we're it. But we'll give people, I'll give people a chance if they want to unmute themselves to ask a question. Hmm. Hello, James, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hey, how are you going? Um, it's Daniel here. I'm just wondering what version iPad should the students have to be able to download that app? Oh, okay. Uh, to download the app? Like what version iPad should they be having? Like, because iPad 2, 3, 4, like... Uh, okay. I don't the... know. James can look that up on, online. That is right we'll, on there. And it's we'll got, try that. Um, we'll jump and back. And it's got device requirements right there. So yes. I, I can't just remember that offhand. So... Yeah. James can look it up. We'll jump in and we'll see if we can get it here. Uh, the app of oh, view system requirements. <laughs> okay. And it doesn't appear to have it specific. Oh, wait a minute. If we jump yes, to the, do. The, the iPad there. Okay. So you need an iPad 2 or newer and you need iOS 8. iOS 8. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> So if you forget that, Daniel, you can go online and look. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've had a play with it myself in the holidays, and yeah, I think the kids are really loving it. We've only done the first stage of um, getting our kits together, mm -hmm. oh, but okay, um, one one set of kids have actually started building their robot. But um, yeah, we'll build our robots, and if I have any dramas, I'll I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Well, let us know the good things too, not necessarily the dramas, but say, hey, I did this beautiful oh, no, cool think, thing with the kids. So yeah, no, I think the kids are going to really like it. Yeah. Yeah, we like to hear good stories too. You know, you can also get into the competitions like RoboCup Junior and. Oh you wow. Know, so whereabouts are you? What state are you in? I'm, I'm in Queensland. In Queensland. The yeah, so RoboCup yeah. Junior Queensland's a really active RoboCup. So, and you know, that's for beginners and people just starting out. So go for it. Okay, yeah. I, sorry I missed that last PD, James. I think it's the um, time difference because you guys are in New South Wales, are you? That's oh, correct. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, you, you were one of the late ones. There was you? a bit of yeah. confusion there. <laughs> yeah, I got... Yeah, anyway. But um yeah, that was great. That was very helpful. Um I'll get a copy of the um whatever I missed as well. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Good. Thanks, Daniel. I've got any six. other oh, yeah, I've sorry. Got six, I've got six kits at the moment. So um I think we'll just start off with just building our robots and then um we'll start doing some coding. But I'm also getting familiar with that scratch program as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, yes. so that's that's with another class. They're going to be doing another project with um, tailoring it to a native plants garden. Yeah, but anyway, oh, yeah, wow. okay. sounds good. Yeah. Sounds really good. good. Yeah, for some people, for the competitions, depending how high up you're going, you you might need to use EV3 Lab in order to support third party sensors. That's just a consideration. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. But think about that later, not now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll just start one step yeah, at a time. Yeah, one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other? Yeah, yeah. thanks anyway. Our pleasure. Oh, no worries. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Any other All questions? Right. No. So we might um, call it a day. Then I'm sure you're probably quite keen to get going anyway. So, but if you've got anything and you let us know afterwards, we'll be good. So, um, yeah, thank you all for hanging in there and thank you for coming along and um, 
if you want to log into one of when's your next um webinar with python james oh, do you know I'm no you probably don't sure know. Off the top of my head, it's no. all right you'll find out but if it's you're interested you can go online and have a look so